So we're solving rational equations. Now this is something you did in Algebra 2, so this is not brand new, but I know it's frustrating and sometimes difficult. So we're going to go over it right now. Now the first thing you want to do when you're solving rational equations is identify um, your common denominator, which means you first need to factor anything that can be factored. You'll notice that x minus 2 can't be factored, x plus 2 cannot be factored. But x squared minus 4 is one of those perfect, um, perfect square ones. So what we can do is we can if you need to box it out, um, you're going to find that you get x plus 2, x minus 2. And now when we do that, you're going to see that we have some similarities. Like we have an x plus 2 there and there. So x plus 2 is going to be a part of our common denominator, but we'll see also that the first fraction does not have x plus 2. So that one needs an x plus 2. Okay, so now that one has an x plus 2. Notice I'm underlining. This gives me a visual, so I make sure everything's included. Now I have an x minus 2, and you'll see this one has an x minus 2. But the second one doesn't have an x minus 2. So I need to multiply top and bottom there by x minus 2. All right, so now um, that one has an x minus 2. And now if we look at them all, they all have an x plus 2 and they all have an x minus 2, and there's nothing that isn't underlined. So they all have a common denominator. Now I have to do my simplification on the top. So as I go through and do that, okay, so I'll do that in blue here, I have to take that 1 and multiply it through, so I get 1x plus 2 times 1 is 2 equals, now that's going to be over my common denominator of x plus 2x minus 2. Okay, on my next fraction I have to multiply through by 3, so then I get 3x minus 6, <clears throat> and that's going to be over x plus 2, x minus 2. And then my next one, I didn't need to multiply anything here, but you'll notice I do have a minus sign, and you want to be careful with minus signs, and this is the biggest place people make mistakes, is that if that minus sign is in there, you need to bring that along with this if you're going to multiply it through anything, if there was a bubble to multiply by. I don't have a bubble, so this is just going to be a minus 6x over x plus 2, x minus 2. Now here's the cool thing about rational equations. You see, I have an equal sign here, which means I want this side to be equal to this side, and here's what's cool. The bottom is already equal. I already have the exact same thing on the bottom. So now I can focus all my attention on the top. And so now I rewrite just the top, so I have x plus 2 equals 3x minus 6 minus 6x, and now I can just solve that equation like I normally would solve any equation. So I get x plus 2, I'm running out of room here, sorry about that, minus 3x, because I put my 3x and my 6x together, minus 6, and then I just start doing my normal solving that should become very simple to you now at this point. And I keep on going, and I get 4x equals negative 8, divide by 4, and I get negative 2x equals negative 2. Now when you're done with that, when you're looking at that and saying, hey, this is my answer, don't stop yet. Because you need to go back and you need to say, you know, if x is negative 2, how does that affect my equation? Okay, if I put a negative 2 here, I get negative 2 minus 2, that's negative 4, so I get 1 over negative 4, I don't see anything wrong with that. But if I put a negative 2 here, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So now I have 3 over 0. And if you remember, in any math class you've ever taken, we've talked about you cannot divide by 0. That's a no-no. And so because plugging in a negative 2 here makes this equation divided by 0, that means negative 2 cannot be a solution. And hey, that was my only solution. And if that's your only solution and you just crossed it off, you're going to say no solutions. See, we call that when you plug in a negative 2 or when you get an answer that you got legitimately but when you plug it in and it actually gives you something false we call that an extraneous solution okay it means you did everything right but it still doesn't work so we can't use it and so sometimes you'll still have something left over but other times you're just gonna have to say no solutions so always always check your answer on these okay so here's another example I have um, the 2 over x plus 5 over 2x equals 3 now that 3 doesn't have a denominator, so we're going to put it over 1 so that we always see something. Okay, now I notice that they both have an x in them, but 3 doesn't, so I'm going to have to multiply top and bottom by x. And I also notice this one has a 2, but the other two don't. So this one needs a 2. This one's good, and then this one also needs a 2. Okay, so now as I look at them, this has a 2x, this has a 2x, and this has a 2x. So we're good to go. Remember, once the bottom's the same, is all I care about is the top. So now I'm just going to write the top. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 5 equals 6x. 
add 4 and 5 together, I get 9 equals 6x. I have to solve for x, divide by 6. And if I reduce that, 3 goes into both, so I get 3 halves equals x. And then, of course, I want to double check my denominators and make sure that if I was to plug in 3 halves, I don't get 0 on the bottom. Now, the first one's just an x, so that's fine. The second one is 2 times 3 halves. The 2's cancel, but I'm still left with the 3, so that's fine. So x equals 3 halves works for me, and so that would be my answer to that one. And that's rational equations. Get a common denominator. Once you have a common denominator in all of them, just solve the top. Double check your answer to make sure it's not an extraneous solution.